What's going on everyone? Steven here and today we are going to start learning how to make a free cam slash fly cam. This is a series that's a long time coming and finally able to sit down and start doing this stuff. So before I really dive into the nuances of all this, um, I'm going to go through Dragon Quest and we're going to create a fly cam and then after that I'm gonna really dive in probably using a different game so we will learn a lot of the terminology and things used throughout this initial series of videos using this game and then later on we'll really be taking a deep dive into stuff alright so first and foremost what we're gonna be doing here I want to demonstrate it so you know we're in Dragon Quest 11 and because I have the magnifier up top, it kind of limits my mouse movement in the game at the moment. But anyway, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is in Cheat Engine, I have found um, my camera structure. So when I enable this, we see three values here uh, for where the camera is in the world. And that's its X, Y, and Z coordinates. Okay. And then I have pitch, yaw, and roll. All right, and these are rotation along x, y, and z axes. Okay, so basically, you can think of this as well. We'll do it whenever I enable the fly cam. I'll talk all about that. Uh, but the first thing to notice is here with the memory addresses how close these are in memory. Right? These are very close to each other in memory. So all six of these values, well this one isn't used, but it's there because of the game engine and we can have some fun with it, even though the game doesn't use it. But anyway, um, these are all in the same structure. It makes it very handy for us. Sometimes uh, rotation of the camera, which is pitch and yaw and roll, uh, those will be in a different structure from X, Y, and Z. I've run into scenarios where, you know, well, let me start by saying that like 99% of the time, these three values are this close to each other in memory. All right, sometimes they may be eight bytes apart. Um, and very rarely I've had like X, Y be in one structure and then Z is somewhere completely different. Uh, and I don't know why <laughs> but anyway we'll talk all about that in later videos um, so long story short what we can glean from this is we can choose one of these which you know this is what we'll be doing whenever we create or look to start creating our hack we'll look for one of these coordinates and then we can browse the memory region wherever that coordinate is and then we can see uh, quickly what the other values are and we can add those really fast right and then once you get used to seeing what you know pitch and yaw and sometimes roll if your game uses that what those values tend to look like uh, they may even be in the same kind of structure all right so yeah there's a lot for us to take away from that all right so now that I have my cameras coordinates and rotation okay now what I need to do is detach the camera from the player all right and that means I'm moving the player around I want to make it to where the camera is detached from the player so the camera will just sit here and the player will start moving around right so that's you know something that you'll need to find so once I enable that okay you see the player is moving around, the camera's detached, but because my rotation and everything is fine, you know, I can still move the camera around, right? So all I've done is detached the camera from the player. Okay. So now what we want to do is, well, I'm going to hit, let's see, I think it's P. Yeah, P for picture mode. All right. Um, so we're going to use this because see how here we have, you know, elements on the UI there. We've got the mini map and the name of the town. We could find this ourselves, the UI, and get rid of that. But because the game <clears throat> gives us a picture mode, we can use that because here it gives us a hide GUI option. You know, hide the user interface. 
All right, as well as zoom in and out. So anyway, before entering picture mode, um, I did find where we can have our own field of view uh, or zoom range within that. Okay, and then let's see what else we have. Pause environment, we'll be doing that in a little bit. Uh, we'll do this in a little bit. And then this was just a random thing that I found while playing around. Pretty nifty little, you know, whatever it's got going there. <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty fun. You'll find stuff like this too whenever you're digging around and modifying instructions just to see what happens. You might end up doing something like that. And yeah. All right, so I'm also going to toggle change min max clamp range for picture camera. And what that is, is when I go into the picture camera here, I can only move my camera up this far. I want to be able to move higher up and down. I want to look farther than that, right? So we can create our own uh, range for that. So I'm going to disable and re-enable the picture camera. And see, now we can look straight up and straight down. All right, so there's that, okay? And with the zooming in, see now we can zoom in as far as we want. And this is gonna zoom in to the, whatever pixel is that we're looking at. So, you know, I zoomed in that far, right? Which is presumably past this tree. When I do that, I'm not gonna zoom through the tree. I'm zooming into the thing I'm looking directly at, okay? And then you can, of course, do the opposite and zoom way out, which the game doesn't natively let you do this. It limits your zoom and your pitch angle. So anyway, these are all things that I have found and created, uh, and you can find and create whatever you want as you get more and more into this stuff, right? So the final piece of the puzzle, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the UI, is to enable the fly cam all right, and now that I've done that, I can move the camera around in the environment. All right, so we can actually move through characters if we want. All right, and I'm also, uh, I've got a speed variable so that I can move the camera around a lot faster like you saw there. This is what it normally moves around at per the in-game speed. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, there was another value that I wanted to find, okay, um, which they're related. If you get the camera too close to an NPC, that NPC will fade out, okay, and then you can move through it, so it won't obstruct your view. But I actually want to disable that, uh, which, as it so happens, coincides with Whenever you enter picture mode, our protagonist disappears. I wanted to keep him from disappearing, so this disable character fade, I'm gonna toggle that on. Now when I go into picture mode, my guy is still there. I can hide the UI, all right? And then the last thing that I can do here is pause the environment, all right? So you can see the environment here is frozen. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm going to fly around over here, and we can see that everyone in the world is frozen. All right. So, and once again, because of how the game works, those graphics look shoddy. But if I unpause the environment, there, it's fine. All right. So I could work on this pause feature, um, and try to see if I can have it still render everything at high quality as I approach it still. But this will suffice for now. All right, so as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff going on here, and I'm going to show you how I found every single one of these things. <laughs> All right, so this was just a quick demonstration. I had already done a demonstration video before. Uh, showing this whenever the game first came out. Um, but anyway, all right, so now that I've given a demonstration of it, uh, we'll go ahead and hop in and I will show you how I found the camera structure. And uh, yeah, we'll just start there. So 
be right back in a second. All right, I've got a group called Hey YouTube here, ready to rock and roll. First thing, um, I'm keeping up my stuff in here so that we can use it for reference for a couple of things. Um, but uh, whenever you start to do this, okay, typically the easiest value to start with finding is whatever your up and down coordinate is, right? So see how the camera is moving up and then it's moving back down and now it's presumably not moving up and down. However, there are a number of gotchas that I'm going to try to explain along the way for you to consider, okay? A lot of things to think about. Uh, first of all, this floor here, the ground, may not be completely flat. Either that or as the character on a quote-unquote flat surface moves farther and closer, the camera will actually like ever so slightly move up and down. So watch like here, okay, like this area as I move forward. See how that's moving up and down as the character moves farther and closer, right? So we're still moving up and down. So the reason I bring that up is because we're going to be doing changed and unchanged value scans initially, right? You could try increased and then decreased. Um, and you may end up on the value that you want, but if you're, you know, dealing with a negative value perhaps, or, you know, depending on its world orientation in the game, your value may be decreasing as you're walking up, but increasing as you walk down, right? So uh, you may need to take a stab at that, take a guess, and try to whittle your way down that way, because um, sometimes changed and unchanged simply leaves way too many values. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start um, being here on the ground. I've got my hotkeys set. Uh, what I like to do is toggle all of these. Lately, I've been having some results not show up unless I have copy on right toggled. All right, so I've got all these toggled and I'm gonna select float from here, all right? And you may have to do rounded default. If you're in a game and you absolutely cannot find the value, you probably need to do rounded default, okay? Um, I used to untoggle executable memory because presumably, well, you know, most of the values I found, they weren't in executable memory. You know, they weren't in memory regions that needed to be executed for anything. So I was disabling those to try to pare down my results. But just like with copy on write, I've had a number of recent games have their values in uh, executable memory. So I just toggle all these now and deal with all the results. Uh, so yeah, toggle those. You might have to work in between these. You might have to limit your start and stop memory range if you just get too many results. Um, so you'll definitely probably, you know, make use of all this stuff at some point if you get way into it. <laughs> all right, so um, simple values will get rid of exponentiated values, but there are also non-exponentiated ones that I've had it get rid of before that were my actual value. So I don't use that very often. I used to use it all the time until I got burned by it a couple of times. So uh, instead I created my own plugin to remove exponentiated and not a number results. Um, I'll have a link to that in the description below and you'll just throw that in your auto run folder in Cheat Engine and once you start up Cheat Engine you'll have this selection. Um, and once we get down to a point where we use that, I'll explain some stuff, all right? So anyway, enough of that setup there. We are going to do an initial unknown value scan here. All right, now that we've got that, we want to change that value. So I'm going to go back in the game here and walk up the steps and go changed value. All right, and once that finishes, I'm going to move up again. All right, now here's another thing to consider. Just because I've moved up and stopped does not mean that the floating point value 
that represents the character or the camera or whatever you're looking for, it doesn't mean that value isn't still changing like very minutely, okay? I've seen a game like once I move and then stop, it's taken up to 10 seconds for that value to settle before it's not changing anymore and I can do, you know, a changed or unchanged accordingly, right? So the reason I say that is because right now I'll do a changed and now I can do an unchanged because that value hasn't changed. But if I do this and then do changed and now do unchanged, like immediately after, I might not find that value because I might accidentally filter it out like it hasn't had time to settle. This is a day and night thing that the game does. It alters the pitch. That's another thing that I still have to actually go in and fix. <laughs> um, all right, so anyway, uh, I'm going to change the value here. I'm going to let it settle, settle, settle. Now I'm going to go changed and then unchanged. Move down, changed, changed. And you see how the results are whittling down pretty nicely. Up, up, changed, changed. All right, so now if you want, what you can do is, now we'll do unchanged. There we go. We're whittling it down. All right, so it's going to get around to about this much. Move up again. We'll do changed. Wait for a minute and then changed and unchanged. All right, so now if we want, we can actually start trying to do like decreased and increased. Let's give that a shot. So I'm going to move down and do, I'm going to wait a minute and then do decreased. And now I'm going to do unchanged. I'm going to move up just slightly. Let it sit here for a second. All right, did you see that? Look at some of those addresses. Watch these addresses right here, okay? I'm going to move down and just watch. Watch my character stop and then look at those values. See how it's taking them a second to settle? If I had done changed and then unchanged, like watch this. I'm going to move up and do changed. But look, they're still changing. So had I done unchanged, even though my character was stopped, I, all those results would have been gone. And one of those is probably what I'm looking for, right? So even if you don't know what the value is, give it time to settle. All right, so now that I'm doing that, uh, let's do decreased. Wait a minute, decreased. Come on, oh, I'm hitting the wrong keys. Move up, increased after it settles. Okay, so we're really whittling them down. All right, so now with my plugin that I've created, um, what you want to do is actually right click on one of these column headers. You don't want to click on a value. Uh, you'll right click and then choose remove E and NAN or not a number results. Uh, what you want to do though is wait until you're down to like a thousand, maybe two thousand. I mean, if you're desperate, you can get it down to ten thousand or so. But this is a pretty slow process for it to do this. And I've just found that getting it sub one thousand, I mean, you wait the least amount of time. But it gets rid of these exponentiated, the ones with E and values that say not a number or NAN. All right, uh, like I said, you could um, initially toggle to show simple values only, which will get rid of these, but it might get rid of a value like this or one of these. There's some other ones that aren't exponentiated it'll also get rid of. Um, finally, the reason why I do this is because we're going to be mass locking values. You know, we're going to try to keep the value what it is, and then we're going to move and see if something happens. Well, I found that uh, especially with certain game engines like Unreal Engine uh, and I think Unity as well. When you try to lock these exponentiated type of values, like whatever the actual value represents in memory, it makes the game crash. So I don't think I've ever had this be something meaningful for me 
insofar as the value truly being like this big of a number, right? So anyway, I'm going to right click here and go remove E and not a number results. All right, I didn't remove too many, but now I'm going to move here. All right, and we'll go changed value. Now I'm going to jump with the character and do, well, actually, because we've been moving up and down with the character. Okay, this is how you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. The camera's been moving up and down, and the character has been moving up and down. So presumably within these 925 results so far, we've got our character's up and down coordinate as well as the camera. Okay, so I'm going to move up to like here. And I'm going to do a changed value scan again just to get everything back to this like equilibrium. All right, and now I'll try running this one more time. All right, so now what I'm going to do is add these. Oh, here we have some other values. Uh, well, actually, let me show you another tactic I like to do. All right, if the value, if you see a bunch of zeros, sometimes you'll see like exactly zero. If you want to get rid of exactly zero, then here you can say value between zero and zero. All right, and we'll check not. So when we hit next scan, we want to keep values that are not between zero and zero. All right, you have to do that to get rid of true zero values. All right, so, uh, well, floating point values. So we'll go next scan with that. And, you know, depending on your confidence, if you're dealing with negative numbers or not, you could say the value needs to be bigger than zero, right? And that would filter out a bunch of these type of values here, right? So, yeah, just another little quick tip for you there. All right, so what we're going to do is add all of these down here. I'm going to hold shift and click and drag them in here. All right, toggle this, which will show us these. All right, so now what I like to do is sometimes I'll just lock everything and we'll start there. But whenever I see some values that look like these, like 0, 0 0.0, blah, 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 like really precise, I don't, I can't recall a time that this has been my X, Y, Z in terms of like position in the world. Now rotation, you might see something like that, but your location in the world, it's usually going to be something like this, you know, or one of these larger numbers. You can't always assume that, but it's pretty common. Anyway, so what I like to do is try to find like big groups of um, addresses here all right because typically like a bunch of related values will be you know like 008c this address right here like if we selected all of these and tried to toggle all of these right and see if those work if they don't work nix it right um and then you could do the same with all these. Now see all these values that are changing? Like these don't look like our values because they're changing and we're not doing anything. So we can go ahead and get rid of that whole range there. All right. Um, finally, I don't like to start with these super low address values. They have a tendency to cause crashes because of whatever the game is doing with these values and storing and using them in this lower address. So I like to start with something a bit higher. So I'm going to start with the twos. Okay. And look, we've got two, five, three for like a really long time. I'm just going to select all the twos. Hit spacebar to lock them. I'm going to move down. And you can just sit here for a minute and see if you observe anything. Now, if it was the true value, we'd be seeing the camera perhaps bob up and down, or we'd see the player bob up and down because it's trying to put the character back where you have the value locked, as well as 
the position it's supposed to be in because you're moving it there. So you're trying to observe that conflict. Right, so because it's none of these values, apparently, I'm going to just hit delete. All right, get those out of the way. All right, now I'm going to select the three range. I'm still going to keep these around because, well, no, here we have these E values. I don't think it's those, but anyway. So three, three, two. I'll just select all the threes. Well, these are changing. Let's get rid of those. All right, let's see if we have any. I'm looking over here at the value to see if we have any other E results popping up in that range. And I don't see anything, which is good. So let's select all those. Try to move up and down. All right, not observing any changes. Let's get rid of those. Now I'm going to go for four. And this is just kind of like my process because you could try locking everything, but if you start experiencing crashes because you whittle it down to let's say like 2,000 results or something, um, and you try locking all values first, if you experience crashing, going through these like uh, sort of regions of memory will help you mitigate that, you know. and once you know if your game crashes then you know it should be presumably easy enough for you to scan back down to that same sort of number of results and as you observe which ranges seemed to make you crash you can avoid those next time you know what i mean like i've gone through what two groups i think so far two or three and so i know i haven't done any of these zero ones so presumably if this third one makes me crash the next time I come back in here, I can get rid of whatever the range is with the first three or however many, and then go to the next one. You know what I mean? All right, so I'm locking that one. I'm not observing anything. Delete that. Let's try the fives. All right, I'll try the sixes too. All right, look at that. See the character doing that? So we've found our characters up and down coordinate so somewhere in there is our character all right let's toggle off well let's move him down which will keep that conflict going so now we can untoggle like individual values or groups of values right you can't do this with every game but here we're watching it so we want to see what happens okay boom so the character is in the five range here but that's the character Z coordinate or whatever is its up and down coordinate. We want to find the camera. You know, the player can be useful because then we can do hacks like uh, transport or teleport player to camera. You know what I mean? So if we have the player coordinates, then we can teleport it to wherever we have the camera when we're zooming around. All right, so I'm not observing anything with these sixes. So I'm going to get rid of those. All right, how about these sevens? Try those. Let's move up and down. Okay, look at that. You can see the player, you know, the whole scene is jostling up and down, and that's because the camera is the thing bobbing up and down right now, right? So as I move the player closer to where it should be, we see that conflict lessening. Right, so the player is staying where he is. This is all the camera. This is good news for us, because this is presumably a value that we're looking for. So we know that in the 500 range is the player, and somewhere in here is our camera. So, you know, you can start untoggling big groups of values. All right, uh, seven fours, those are done. Seven sixes. Those aren't it. 77C, nope. 77E, none of those. Try these, none of those. Let's go here, nope. So this is, I know this is taking a little bit, but the reason I'm doing this is because this is, I'd rather put in this amount of time than just go willy nilly <laughs> and screw something up and miss out. You know what I mean? 
Uh, these are a little more surefire tactics that I've found. All right, so boom. This one here, we'll say it's camera. Okay. So whatever is going on there. All right, that looks like it has to do with uh, camera zoom value. All right, so one of these, presumably one that's really close by is going to have to do with that. All right, it's not that one. How about this one here? Yep, so this one is like cam orbit zoom to player. We'll call it that, you know. Um, okay, so now that we have found those, there's something else that I want to make note of. That was like the camera physically bobbing up and down. Uh, whenever we go to actually do our free cam script, this is not the right value. There's There are other camera related values in here that we're going to need to find. All right. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to lock, uh, let's see, are any of these? Man, nope. I'm going to select these, move the character up. All right, you see this, like, sort of glitchy there. You see that glitchiness? Um, sometimes that could be, like, an object in the world or something in the world that's trying to position itself. Or other times, this is what you will more commonly see when you're looking for your camera. Okay? More often than not, the camera value from the game is being written to the memory address faster than Cheat Engine can write the memory that you've locked, right? So for those who don't know, locking a value doesn't mean that's the value. It's just Cheat Engine is now trying to write this value faster to that memory address than the game will, okay? Um, so anyway, now that we are seeing this sort of glitchy behavior, um, this is going to be the one that we want. So I'm going to toggle these and see if we still observe the behavior. And it looks like we don't, which is good because there was a lot of other stuff here I was going to have to go through. <laughs> all right, so we're good to go there, I think. We can select all of these, get rid of those, we'll get rid of this one. We will get rid of the ones up to the fives. And we have identified that we don't need these lower ones. So like I was saying, it could have been one of these, but uh, I like to avoid those or save them until last. All right, so let's try locking these three. Oops. All right, there we go. So it's one of these. That's the one, player. We'll say Z. All right, so we can get rid of this one. All right, and okay, this is another tip that I want to mention. Sometimes you'll need to find another object in the world that has the same coordinates. You know, like maybe the character, um, the texture here, you know, what you see on the character, what's being drawn. Uh, something in there has the same coordinates as the bone structure of the model. Um, or maybe there are certain sound related events that happen based on points that are in the same location. So see these two addresses? I mean they're in nearby memory and they have the same value. So this was a kind of getting back to another tutorial. I think it was the no clip hack. Um, where whenever you find a value, sometimes you may need to find another object that has that same value. So that's where you would, you know, like copy this value, go new scan, put that value in, and then, wow, that's a ton of results with that. Float, okay, yeah. So, anyway. I feel like I did something wrong there. I can't believe there's this many results uh, with that number. Anyway, okay, so long story short, yeah, you might want to keep that in mind um, during your 
searching around. So I'm going to delete these values here. I'm going to, let's see, cam, orbit, zoom to player, camera, that. Okay, so somewhere in here was the glitchiness. Let's try locking these. And I'm moving up to see if we can observe jumping. Sometimes, like one of the Final Fantasy games I did this with, it took forever. Oh, man, I'm a dummy. I had not toggled here. Some of you might have caught that. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll get you sometimes. Just remember when you have not toggled because you will completely screw yourself. New scan. Okay. Um, anyway. All right, so none of these seem to be doing what I'm interested in. So, yeah, cheat engine is kind of frozen up on me there. Okay. Okay, once it finishes getting frozen here, because I had a ton of those results that it's presumably trying to clean up and get rid of. Alright, let's see if it's working now. Nope, still frozen. Hopefully this didn't just completely freeze, because if it did, then I am going to have to start this again. And I'm hoping to not have to just skip out on waiting. All right, I'll just be right back when this is done. <laughs> All right, there we go. I had hit this a bunch of times, I guess, and it was trying to run through those. So let's lock these. We're going to move up. And I thought I might have seen a jump. I don't know if I finished what I was saying about Final Fantasy a little bit ago. I already forgot, but Final Fantasy, like, once a minute. Oh, did you see that very slight glitch? Yeah, there we go. So it could be one of those but that's not quite what I expect to see because I'm seeing objects in the distance that are flickering too. And this almost looks like these might be related to those. So I'm gonna keep those there, but I'm going to try to toggle the rest of these, move down and see what happens. Okay, the whole screen moving there is what I sort of expect to see. So I'm gonna untoggle these D7s and see if we still see the screen kind of jump around there. And I'm not seeing it, so I don't think it's one of these. So we'll turn those back on and untoggle these and then move up. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to start by untoggling. So this, see how this value is moving? Sometimes it'll be that one that's trying to adjust. Um, other times that'll be dependent on another value you have locked. So it looks like that one is not the one. Ah, did you see it there? All right, so I'm going to untoggle that. Let's see if we see it still act jumpy. And sometimes you can blink and miss this. So sometimes you sit there and just hold your eyes open with your fingers. <laughs> All right, so I think this one's going to be it. So let's untoggle these and move down. And see there we go so I think this one is going to be like true camera Z okay I want you to delete these delete these and you're not necessarily gonna know this difference the between this true camera Z and then camera Z this is just experimentation and Sometimes you'll spend 12 hours or something like hacking and getting through to a certain point and your stuff just won't quite work properly and then you kind of have to go back to the drawing board and find that crap there is another value that I need to be considering, right? So now what we can do is I'm going to enable my script here and go camera structure scan and we're going to cheat a little bit here and let's see D, uh, D7 F1 D938 Look at that. See this? This is the true value. When I first did this game, um, I went with this value and it screwed me. I can't remember how or why, but maybe it was whenever I went to actually like decouple the camera. Uh, there were a lot of shared values going through whatever instruction reads or writes, something like that. Anyway, so this one, no bueno. We're not going to use it. All right, so now we have found player 
Z coordinate, true camera Z coordinate, and then this random value that we don't necessarily care about. So we can create a header and call it other interesting values or something like that. All right, and then we're gonna toss those in there and right click and go hide children when deactivated. So if you wanted to keep these values, you know, like let's say your game crashes, but you wanted to find your way back to these, go ahead and see what accesses or rights to them and see if that's the only address or part it out however you have to. That way you can find your way back to them if you want. And then you can add notes to your table extras, which I do all the time, you know, like all this information that I just gave you about how I found Z and all this other stuff, like I keep all that stuff in my table extras. Um, and so I do that with every game so I can go back, revisit, and, you know, learn, keep more in mind for next time. All right, so now that we have this, what we can do is with our true camera Z, we'll right click and we'll say browse this memory region. All right. <clears throat> I don't know why that is appearing behind cheat engine there maybe it has something to do with what I screwed up a little bit ago all right fantastic anyway uh, that's fine we'll just keep it here so this is the memory region we will right click and we'll say display type float okay all right so this is our camera Z and typically remember what I was talking about earlier how X Y and Z are nearby each other okay if this is Z then we need to move up one row, boom, and this should be Y and this should be X. So now what we can do is just right click here and go add this address to the list. Call it true camera X. This one right click and we'll say uh, add this address to the list, true camera Y. Okay. And now, since I like to see the X being the first thing over here, I'll just right click on this and go uh, browse this memory region. Okay, so here's X, Y, Z, and if we're lucky, this is going to be pitch and this is going to be yaw. Alright, so I'm going to put this down here and watch these values. I'm just going to click over here, but watch these two as I move the mouse. Alright, so as we would perhaps expect to see, we're seeing the camera's X, Y, Z values change, as well as this presumably pitch and yaw, okay? You see this zooming out and this other stuff that happens as you're moving the mouse up and down? Like, I'm not moving anything forward. That's all stuff that happens when you get to the min and max clamp range of pitch, right? So... If you were looking for pitch, which was another thing that I initially scanned for, because usually that's pretty easy. You put your mouse at the top, you know, do a scan for that. You can do changed, unchanged values, and then, um, yeah. So, hang on, i got to adjust my headphones here. Okay. Sometimes my headphones will click if I don't keep them adjusted. So sorry if this audio has some clicking in it. All right, so now that we have this, uh, what was I saying before I was adjusting my headphones? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and so whenever you're looking for pitch that uh, does stuff like this where it zooms in, sometimes there will be like a composited value that contains some information with this zoom along with the pitch and whatever else. Um, so you want to try to find a value that actually just moves from say positive 40 to negative 40 or 65 to negative 80 or something like that. Right? So, <clears throat> all right. Now what we can do is add those two. So add this, we'll call it true camera pitch and then with this one we'll say add true camera yaw pitch and yaw all right so we'll move this down to here okay 
And so now we have XYZ pitch and yaw of the camera. That's cool. That's like the biggest step. All right, out of the way. We found our coordinates. All right, now what we want to do is find instructions that uh, we can get these values from. Okay, so what I like to do is find an instruction that accesses. Okay, not one that writes. Technically, accessing can be reading or writing, but I want to find an instruction that reads the values from one of these addresses. Okay, and then once we find that, we can create our own pointer to that address and then add our own offsets for these other values. So we only need to find one instruction that will read. So that'll give us the ability to do like this where I can do my camera structure scan and I can read the values without doing anything to them. You know, like I'm not enabling an instruction that disables writes to those coordinates or I'm not using the instruction that writes any of these coordinates to read them because we might need to do something else with the instructions that write to these addresses. Okay, so I'm going to try starting with pitch. And the reason I'm going to start with pitch is because rarely do I see pitch um, being shared with any other address. Okay, so this Z, or I'm sorry, X, whatever instructions are reading from this, um, that same instruction might be shared in reading from other camera related structures or values, right? Or addresses, whatever. All right, so I'm going to start with pitch. All right, let's find what accesses this address. Okay, if we want, we can try moving up and down and see what that does. Okay, so I'm going to go stop. Okay, so we have one instruction that writes. I'm going to avoid that one. I'm going to go for this one here. So show disassembler. All right, right click here. Find out what addresses this instruction accesses. All right, this popped up in another window here. And I just want to see are there any other addresses being accessed here. Okay, so a lot of times you'll get an instruction like this that, you know, we see our value here in memory as 10.8. Why is it negative 36 blah, 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 blah. And that's because this instruction is writing more than just that value. So here, Cheat Engine has identified that and said that the type is a double. But we know it's a float, so if we change it to float, bam, there's the value we expect to see. So I'm going to stop that. All right, and since we know that this is an instruction that reads and it's reading pitch and it's always reading it, even if we're not moving the mouse around, we can use this instruction to create a code injection to find our way to these coordinates. So now I'm going to go Tools, Auto Assemble, okay, Template, AOB Injection. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say OK. And everything we're about to do, I have previous videos where I explain what all this means and what I'm doing. So I'll link to that stuff in the description. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to click OK. And for this inject, um, I'm going to name this camstruct because this is our camera structure. OK. I'm going to get rid of these notes here. All right, instead of this AOB scan module, I'm going to get rid of that first part and go assert. And now I'm going to replace this with what I copied. And what this is going to do is assert that at this location in memory, these bytes exist. Okay, it's gonna check that. And if they do not exist like this exactly at this location, then this script will not enable. All right, and that's good for if there's an update in the game and you attach Cheat Engine to the game, load your script, you know, and something, you know, something different is at this location. If you don't have this assert and you enable it, it's probably going to make your game crash, right? So I just have that assert there. Next thing we can do is define as, what was it, camstruct this. Okay, so this was an AOB scan. 
and especially with larger games like this, enabling a script, uh, the AOB scan, can take some time to complete. So instead of doing that, what I'm saying is uh, assert that these bytes are here, all right, and then I just want you to go ahead and apply this label, like camstruct, to this location. I know that the bytes I'm interested in are at this exact location. So don't scan for these bytes. Don't scan all of memory for those bytes. Just take me here, right? Uh, and we apply that. The next thing I like to do is Control R because I want to rename. That's probably popping up behind Cheat Engine here. Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to click up here because I want to be before any occurrences of what I'm going to replace. Instead of new mem, I'm going to call it uh, cam struct mem replace all. Okay, so we've got that, just something a little more meaningful. All right, for this register symbol cam struct, I'm going to move that from down here to up here. Okay, and for the alloc here, I am also going to register a symbol of cam struct mem. And that's because we are going to define as p cam struct or pointer to the camera structure cam struct mem plus 100. So at this whatever location in memory this is. So basically, Cheat Engine is going to allocate somewhere near this memory region. It's going to basically scan for a code cave more or less and look for a place that it can allocate some memory um, <clears throat> if the jump distance is going to be greater than I think 2 gigs um, so it's like a 64 bit thing but anyway um, so at that location plus an offset of 100 we are going to just define that as a place that we'll create our own pointer to this camera structure alright and finally I'm going to register the symbol pcamstruct all right. Had I not registered this symbol here, it would not know what cam struct mem plus 100 is when I try to do this. All right. So now that I have that done, what I want to do is because this is not a shared um, instruction that I'm going to be using, I don't have to push flags and do any of that. So right here, I'm just going to go p cam struct. Uh, we'll just DQ0. I know I don't need that much, but... Um, Alright, so now that we have that, uh, this basically... Uh, my brain is starting to go right now. Um, we essentially initialize <laughs> memory here, prepare it for the value that we're going to put there. Okay, so what we want to do now is, at this point, we want to move into the memory address at pcamstruct uh, rcx okay rcx plus the offset of 41c is our pitch okay we're not worried about that we just want rcx which is the base of whatever structure this represents we know our camera data is in there we could go you know from offset 0 up to 41c and presumably all the stuff in between has to do with our camera maybe so that could be stuff like blur contrast whatever uh, or not <laughs> so anyway that's another thing that you can glean from like the offset all right so now that we've done that all right, we've got our return here. Camstruct will write those bytes back. Next, we're going to unregister our symbols, pcamstruct and camstruct mem. All right, so with that, now what we will do is uh, in our script, we'll just have to create, um, once we enable this, we will create our own references to all the stuff that we want to see. I'm going to close that. We'll go. Uh, oh, and finally here, the snippet, you want this because if the game does an update and your script stops working, you can do your own AOB scans uh, like from here, array of byte, 
and toggle all of these can be any of these have hex selected and you can AOB scan for any of these things and typically after an update the same thing you know minor things might have changed but they'll be in a close spot like maybe 22F B14 or something like that right and so in your results even if you have more than one you can perhaps find your way to exactly the right one that you can reference like this that way you don't have to worry about getting uh, a more finely tuned array of bytes so that you don't you know overwrite bytes in a different place that have the same uh, byte array all right so now that we've got that that's pretty much my get up right here okay so I'm gonna say file assigned to current cheat table all right pcam struct plus 41 C is our pitch so we're gonna add address manually all right pcam struct plus 41 C we're gonna call this pitch and then we are going to say float and then OK and I'm going to pop that in here and this is where I will now rename this to camera structure all right now I'm gonna copy and paste this a bunch of times because we know the other values are nearby um, so if 41 C is pitch then presumably this will be yaw and this is four bytes away so that's gonna be 420 all right and we'll say this is Z this is Y this is X this is gonna be 418 414 and 410 boom now when we enable this tada look at that same addresses BAM we've got the camera structure we've got our values we are goldish all right so now that we have that what we need to do is decouple the camera from the player moving how on earth do we do that uh, there's probably a boolean value somewhere um, that we could toggle that and you know is camera coupled to player yes or no but we're not going to do that. For our free cam script, we are going to read and write our own values. Okay. What we care about is that there are instructions that read the values from uh, these addresses. And from there, it will move. Okay. So we want to presumably get rid of instructions that write to these addresses right uh, well not our pitch and y'all we're just always reading that we don't have to worry about that oh one more thing I wanted to share the game here does not use roll so there's pitch yaw and roll I'm gonna copy this and paste it here and I'm gonna say roll but this is playing off of the fact that we know typically which values are nearby in memory right since we have identified how the structure looks typically pitch yaw and roll are in the same place uh, or same sort of distance away from each other in a structure and so now what we can do is try to change this value to something like 50 nothing happened okay we see it's still zero so there is an instruction writing to this so let's find what writes to this address Okay, and we've got this instruction. All right, so we're gonna stop, click on this, show disassembler. All right, let's right click, find what addresses this instruction accesses. Seems to be only one. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's replace this with code that does nothing. Let's come in here, um, bring this down here. I'm gonna change this value to 25 now and watch the screen. All right, the camera is like rolling, right? So if I go 45, that's like that, 90, 
180 is upside down. And if we kept going, 360 would be like 0, 720 would be like 0, 1080, <clears throat> and so on. So if we wanted to have roll for some reason to use, to have some fun with something in our script, there it is. The game doesn't use roll. Maybe it does somewhere, like in a cutscene or something. I don't know. Or maybe it uses it for like a rumble feature. But there it is. So another thing we can't influence right here but we can make happen here, and then we could bind roll to hotkeys, like some kind of left or right thing, and make the camera roll. All right, so that's how I roll. Yeah. Uh, yeah, terrible dad jokes. All right, so I'm going to restore with original code. Um, and presumably, just like in memory here, how all these things are nearby, you know, in this one structure, uh, whatever function or method we're in here within this subroutine, uh, this is the thing that's writing to roll. So the instructions that write to yaw and pitch are probably nearby as well. And we can glean that by, you know, uh, we can see RDI plus 424. If that's roll, then offset 420 would be yaw. Do we see 420 in here anywhere? We don't, okay? Well, what about 41C? We see that here, okay? So typically these move SD, if you click on an instruction, you can see here, move scalar double floating point, okay? A double floating point, that means the value that's in XMM0 that's being moved here spans eight bytes, okay? So our pitch and yaw values are being moved as in one instruction like this, okay? So 41C, which is pitch, right? And 420, that's an eight byte span, right? That's what this one instruction is doing. So if we replace this with code that does nothing, right and we move left and down up and right right we can see that our pitch and yaw aren't acting properly this is basically ignoring a specific plane right so this is almost like a 2d plane that we're moving on now we can move up and down left and right but we're not moving like in and out or rotating up and down right so but once again, we're not worried about that because we're not doing anything with pitch and yaw except reading, right? So I can restore that with original code. And then if we want, we can, um, which one was it? Four, two, four, I think it was. Place code does nothing. 50, yeah. So if we wanted to, just for use later, uh, restore with original code. This is where I'll take something like this and I'll go tools, auto assemble, template, AOB injection. I'm going to copy this, say OK, and then I'll call, well, actually, I don't need to call it anything because what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to write assert, paste that. All right, and then what we're going to do is at this location, Okay, and then I'm going to get rid of all that. So that instruction is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can say db, or we could say nop6, whatever you choose. Okay, paste this here, get rid of these. Okay, so this will uh, get rid of the instruction that writes to roll. So I'll assign that to current sheet table, and I'm keeping this snippet here, because once again, if something changes, I want to have this kind of snapshot in code that I could presumably scan for again. Assign to current sheet table, and we'll say NOP roll. Okay, so now that we've got that, okay, and we're reading our values, the last thing we need to do is um, decouple the camera. So let's find what writes to this address. Okay, let's stop that. Let's find what writes to Y. 
stop that. All right, so look, here again we have the same instruction, right, in the same location. It's writing X and Y. Okay, so what about Z here? Find what writes to this address. Stop. Find what writes to this address. Stop. Is this also the same one? Okay. Not the same one. Close by in memory, right? Very close. Okay, so what we can do here is see in the move SD, that was that moving the two values basically. This is just a regular move. So we'll go show disassembler. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this, get rid of this. All right, let's see if there are other values this is accessing. Okay, doesn't look like it. Now this is where you could move around and try different cutscenes and see, you know, maybe there will be more than one value that's being written to here. But for our purposes of a fly cam, this is about as good as it gets, that we don't have to worry about pairing out our value um, from other values being used in a shared instruction. So here I'm gonna click float, boom. That is our X, as we would expect to see. All right, so we're gonna stop that, close. If we replace this with code that does nothing, what happens? Well, we want to do that one, and then we wanted to do, uh, we can close that. Let's, which one was Z? It was just a regular move. Uh, just right click. Find what writes, stop. Show disassembler. Ah, there it is, okay. It's right in front of my face. All right, I am going to um, replace it with code that does nothing. Okay. Now what happens? Oh, look at this. We're, we're moving around freely now, independent of the character. Like, we're not orbiting around the character. And you can see as I'm moving the character there, he is completely independent of the camera, right? So we can move the camera around. We can have him be like, Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> All right, so. So, dude. So now we have Homie right here. All right. And now that we have that, um, we have what we need to decouple the camera. All right, so I'm going to restore with original code that one. Restore with original code that one. Okay. So now I'm going to just on this one go tools. And again, this is kind of a model scenario with this game. Okay. Uh, sometimes these instructions might be in completely different locations. Not a big deal. Uh, with this, it just makes it handy because when I do this snapshot, I'll have both things here. So I'll do uh, AOB injection. Copy this. Say OK. Okay, we're not worried about that. Because now what we're going to do is, once again, we are going to assert that those bytes are at this location here. All right, and then after that, what we're going to do is get rid of all that. Come here, DB, and we can immediately see the number of bytes here. Okay, and then in disable, we'll just paste that there. We'll get rid of these. All right, so what we can do is say disable XY rights to decouple camera from player. Okay, and now all that we need to do is, it was the move EAX, this one here, okay? Now what we can do is just copy this, okay? And we're just referencing this exact spot, or these exact spots in memory, and we're saying, do this in these exact spots, declare these bytes. Okay, so that one will be 
and then we can say disable Z rights to decouple camera from player. Okay, so now that that's done, these restore, these nop, and I have my snapshot here, and if you want, you can say like XY start, XY end, uh, yeah, whatever, we'll keep that that. And then we can copy that, and this gives us a quick reference of where at in our snapshot here. Uh, we're modifying instructions for X, Y, and Z. Okay, now we go file, assign the current cheat table, close that. Now we can say decouple camera. All right, and let's go back in the game here. Move around, camera is acting like normal, right? Orbiting around the player. All right, now we are going to toggle our script here, and boom, I'm moving the camera independent of the player. All right, so now that we've got that, I'm going to leave it off here because this is a long video. <laughs> so uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and record the next part and I might even just post it directly after. I just don't want this video to be super duper duper long. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to plug these values into a script that I already have. And we're not going to dive too deep into the calculations going on in that script. We'll talk about that way deeper in a future future video uh, but anyway suffice to say in the next video we're gonna plug in these values and our fly cam is going to work and it's gonna be good times so thanks so much for watching uh, I have a patreon if you find my content helpful I'm gonna be getting a lot busier now with videos and I want to start doing some things like uh, releasing videos a little bit early on my patreon uh, providing some scripts and things like that for members only there you know nothing too crazy but um, anyway I've got a link for that in the description you don't have to do that if you don't want it's all good but if you do it'd be greatly appreciated uh, but yeah thanks so much for watching don't forget to like it if you did like it if you didn't like it then you didn't like it and I'm sorry also don't forget to subscribe and I will just talk to you on the next video take care